Hello and welcome, I am Glass Lotuses. If you are here for my TikTok, nice to see you found my YouTube channel. One of my TikTok followers requested a design doll tutorial, and I felt like YouTube was a better platform for me to address that, so here we are. For those of you who aren't familiar with Design Doll, it is a program in which you can shape and pose humanoid models for the purposes of art. You can also insert 3D modeled objects into the scene as props or landscapes. Personally, I use it for almost every one of my art pieces, and I find it to be super helpful for visualizing poses. You can do a lot of things in this program, and if you do art, I highly recommend you check it out. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I would reshape and pose a model, and then some of the other little features that Design Doll has to offer. T to start off, you open up the program and you are faced with this little somewhat anime proportioned character. The first thing I like to do if I know what kind of character I'm trying to draw, I either start by changing the size of the parts of the model or I change the shape of the parts of the model. Let's change this character into something not as anime-ish. I'm gonna make the face a little less baby-ish. See, that's looking a little more normal, but the head is rather large, so let's scale that down. When doing resizing in Design Doll, you have these two different size options. One that is a detail adjustment mode, and that allows you to adjust individual pieces with a very fine degree of specificity. You also have this natural pose mode, which I honestly don't use too often. It's decent for stretching, things and resizing that way, but personally I use the detailed mode mostly. So if I were to want to make this head a bit smaller, you have these different rings around different parts of the head. If you wanted to pinch the sides, you could go like that. If you wanted to pinch one end of the head and for some reason make it a <laughs> a little bit of a cone head, you can just do one side of it, but I don't want to do that. If you wanted to move it for whatever weird reason, um, you could, you could shift it to the side. <laughs> So a lot of different random weird possibilities here. You can also stretch it using these, or if you wanted to resize the entire thing, you can just hold down this tiny little point on the side here. So I'm going to make it a little smaller and I'm also going to pull it down. And now what that's going to do is you might start to see the neck poke out of the forehead a little bit, but I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down and what it's actually doing is it's moving the neck down internally and I'm going to click back to the head. I'm going to shift the head up a little bit and that way you get rid of the neck through the forehead problem. All right, that's off to a decent start. So now that we are done reshaping the head, I want to reshape the body. In this case, I'm going to go for a female character, but just to show you your options. So I've already reshaped the face, but there are a bunch of other options that you can use for the head. If you wanted something more skeletal, they have that little thing there, which is kind of creepy, but I've used it a few times for, you know, skeleton heads. They have a lot of different items. And what you can do is you essentially mix and match the types of features you want on your character. So if you want something with a very defined brow ridge and a very defined chin, you can scale this one up, for example. If you want something more anime-like, like we started out with, there's the first one there, then you can scale that up or down, and you can essentially mix and match which kinds of features you'd like. As for the top half of the torso, you have things with a bit more chest muscles and breast tissue, some weird blocky shapes going on here, you have really long neck, just different shapes of things. Um, and there's also the this really fun like tiny chest that's kind of ridiculous but yeah you know you have options um you for the lower torso have a lot of different muscles some different like back curvatures you know just uh different things for the arms and legs you also have other sliders so you can have you can add muscle or you can have some pretty like comical little doll arms there so those are all good fun options as well. Same for the legs, you have some options that are very muscular, some options that are kind of like comical and how out of whack that knee is. <laughs> I'm going to make a character that's a bit more on the feminine side. So I'm going to give her a bit of a chest. I'm not going to give her abs and I actually like the format of this uh, torso. Um, the thighs are also pretty good. Um, so if I were to want to tone down her legs at all or anything like that, I could click on the leg and I can 
can reshape that so I could give her a little bit of narrower legs. Um, if I wanted to make it perhaps thinner this direction, but not necessarily this direction, I can click on this node right here and I can shape it this way, but that'll still leave it as wide it is, as it is from the front. Another thing you can shape and resize are the hands. Um, personally, I like characters with more slender fingers, so I usually tick this up just a little bit. If you go too long, they can look really wonky, but I usually stretch them just a little bit. You can also give your characters slightly thinner fingers, which I personally prefer, so I'm gonna tick that down a little bit. <laughs> you can also give your characters really pudgy fingers, and you can also resize them by the ratio. One other great feature in this resizing portion is the set height, which is in centimeters or percentage. So if you have two characters in the same scene and you know the difference in their heights, you can just set their heights and they will be in proportion to one another. Moving on, if I were to want to rotate this character, which I don't really need to at the moment, but if you had multiple characters in the scene, you might want to face one towards each other. So you can use this position adjustment tool and rotate or tilt your character, but I don't need to do that at the moment. What we're going to do now is you have this pose tab here. I'm going to start by posing my model by just outstretching their hands. You can literally pull the body parts by the nodes in the wrists, ankles, and spine. For the spine, you have a node at the base of the neck, a node in the middle of the back, which if you pull, you get this like bow feature, which kind of tells you the curvature of their spine. So you can have the character arched over to one side. You also have a node for the hips. You'll also notice two arrows for um, a lot of the appendages as well as the chest. The bottom arrow will bend the body but leave the arms floating where they are. The top arrow will bend the torso and take the arms with it. I have this character here, and let's say that I want to make them hold a cake. So I'm gonna bend their spine back a little bit. I'm gonna bend this back. You also have these kinds of like rotational direction modelers. So it has the different axes on it. You can tilt the head this way, side to side really, if you're looking at it straight on. You, you can rotate it like this and say, no, I don't want any cake. I am on a diet. Or <laughs> You can rotate it forward and back and say, yes, I want cake. I do not care about calories. All right, so my character wants cake. So let's give her cake. We are going to put her arms out in front of her and it can kind of take a moment to pose sometimes, but just work with it. You can rotate the hands like I showed off on the neck and you can take the arms in. All right, posing down. Um, and I have modeled a cake in Blender and we're going to give that to her. I am by no means an expert at Blender, so I will not be doing a Blender tutorial. I honestly just, just rendered a few cylinders here and you'll see in a moment how crudely done this is. I'll eventually learn how to use Blender. <laughs> But for today, it will serve my purposes. Um, and I know she is terribly off balance here. Um, if you wanted to make a character that's actually on balance, if you're having them stand on one leg, you would want to have one of the ankle nodes directly below the hip nodes. So I'm gonna have her lean on this one leg and this leg can just be popped up just, you know, for funsies. This foot poser up here would be where this would be super useful if you wanted to pose the foot a little more. You can lift up or down the toes, but for the moment I'm just going to leave her foot on the ground and you can switch between the left and right foot and you can pretty much do the same thing for the hands. And on both the feet and the hands, you'll have these two different ways of looking at it. You have the natural mode, which kind of poses everything for you just based on how clenched you want the foot, essentially. And you can do the same things pretty much with the fingers, although a bit more um, specific to the fingers. And then you also have this more specific mode, just like you have for the scaling and everything. And this would allow you to individually pose different parts of the foot. Usually I don't bother posing the Anyway, moving back to the hands and the cake, let's give her a cake. All right, so to give somebody a, an object, or just to put an object anywhere, we are going to go to the add tag. This is also how you would add another model or a box if you wanted to add boxes into your scene, just like to represent objects. But if you wanted to add another model, you could also add another model here. Another way to add another model is to go to add and then just open up any other model that you might have and it'll insert that for you. I got a little off topic there, but 
So to give her a cake, we can right click up here, go to add tag, import tag. So that appends a little import feature here. So what we're gonna do is click on that. You can see that it is going to bind it to her right hand when I do import it. And that is important when uh, we start looking at where we're going to be placing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click import mesh and I have this cake object. So I'm gonna open that. I usually size it up after. My cake right now is really tiny and you can kind of see it in there. So I'm gonna drag it here and you can kind of see that it is very small, but that is no problem. I'm going to flip it over because it was kind of upside down and let us resize it. So down here, you can see the scale. I'm just gonna make it bigger until it is the size I want. So that's a decent size for a cake. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. It's a wedding cake or something, I don't know. And uh, this is also a tilting cake because the original reason I made this was to uh, make a cake that was kind of falling. You see that it is now positioned in her right hand, which is approximately where we wanted it. I'm gonna move it a little down so it's more flat with her palm and I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. You can also set the color of this to blue or something. <laughs> that looks really weird. Uh, usually I don't bother setting the color. You have your object in there now and we can go back to posing the rest of her. So let's, let me move this hand. What I was talking about before with it being attached to a different part of her body, right now it's attached to this hand. So long as this lock at current coordinates is not checked, it's going to move the cake with this right hand. So if I click on the right hand and I move it, this cake is gonna move with it. Um, you can only lock to one body part at once. I can't have it in both of the hands. If I click here, it's gonna lock it to that wrist. If you want, want to lock it to a different part of the body but not have it move, that's when you would use the lock of current coordinates and then you could switch it to like occupying the other hand. But I'm going to keep it locked on the hand that I kind of have it positioned in already. And this is where adjusting the fingers is very useful. This is the more simplistic view of modeling and moving the fingers. You can see that moving any one of these sliders will move all of the joints in a given finger that it's controlling. If you want a bit more fine decision over what you're controlling though. You can go to the more detailed mode. Let's say I want to press this finger a little harder against it. The fingers can bend backwards a little bit to an extent. And for the thumb, you have the like palm area. You have this first joint and you have the second joint. You also have the spacing between the fingers. You can kind of see the pinky moving underneath the cake there. Alrighty, so that is how you would reshape a model in Design Doll. Add an object and pose different parts of it. Other things you can do in Design Doll, now that you have your person and cake, is you can open up this side panel here, which gives you kind of different camera views. You can see your red eye line here. You can increase that for field of view down here at the bottom. You can also increase and lower the distortion for like different kinds of perspective. Distance, distance down here is another way to warp the perspective. You can also have different kinds of perspective. So currently I'm in real perspective. You can also have lens perspective, which is, you know, like camera view, uh, just plain perspective, which honestly isn't much different than this middle view. You also have orthographic, which I really don't understand what this is for, but maybe somebody else does. Uh, fake perspective, which I honestly never use because what even is that? So I usually stick to real perspective. And another neat little feature is this area down here, which gives you different views for like the lighting and different um, colors of the skin. Or if you don't even want your model to have skin, if you want it to just be a wireframe, you can click this down here and that'll just give you this nifty little wireframe model. You can also turn off the background grid. You can turn off the shadows. Yeah. Another nice little tool is if you wanted to make a person modeled off of a reference, you can insert a background as a camera or 3D view. So let's say I wanted to insert one of my characters and like try and model their body proportions. I can insert a chibi of myself or something. And if I select camera view, like I did, I selected the camera view here, that'll only show me the model in the camera view. If I were to select the 3D view, it'll show up here. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this, this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you have any questions questions and if you're from TikTok, say hi.